Holy cuteness. Look at what we're working with today. I am obsessed. These are some newer products from Waffle Flower. We have a little shaker cover in the shape of a tree and the little coordinating dies to do the cutout. And I'm so inspired. So let's just get right on into it. I think I'm going to do some Distress Oxide blending and have some fun just creating a little texture with that. I haven't used Distressed Oxides in a while, so I have Kitsch Flamingo, Sponge Sugar, and Picked Raspberry to be placed in that order. I think that'll be really fun. And let's grab a panel and get started. Okay, so this is just an 80 pound A2 size panel. So we have four and a quarter by five and a half. I have a little blender brush here as well. And I have blender brushes specific for my Distress Oxide inks. All right, let's start with the sponge sugar. I'm going to do more of an ombre look. Let's see, and I haven't, I haven't worked with these in almost a year, so I'm trying to remember my color combinations, but we'll get it all figured out. That is gorgeous. Okay, so I might bring that down just a tad more. And then we can go right into oops, our next color. Okay, and I'm not gonna worry about cleaning off my brush between these two because this is a little bit more of a darker color, so it won't be just fine. Okay, ooh yeah, I like that a lot. Super pretty. Okay. And just a tad more. There we go, I think that's nice. I'm just going to grab a little bit of my last color to come in and just create a little transition. I think that looks good. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Let's now do picked raspberry. And so I don't smudge my ink with my fingers, I'm just going to grab a little bit of post-it tape and use that to hold my paper. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do this whole panel because I have some ideas of what I wanna do here, but I need to, I just need to decide. The inspiration is there, the decision is not. And that's kind of how I like to enter a card creation. With lots of ideas and then just, let's see where it goes, right? Okay, so I think, that looks beautiful. So, there we go. I might even gum, come in and bump up the mid-tone just a little bit. Okay, so I cleaned off my brush a bit. I'll come back in for my middle tone here. For some reason, I blend better when it's like this. Okay, and let's just kind of deepen that up a little bit. Okay, that to me, is perfect. Okay, so I'm done with my inks. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Now, let me clean up and then I think we will, yeah, let's have it do a little reaction. Okay, I have a little paper towel on standby here where I was cleaning off my brushes. I also have a little water bottle here. I'm just going to spritz down my fingers, get them good and wet, and then I will flick it right on. There we go. I think that'll be super fun. I'm gonna take my paper towel. And there we go. How cute is that? Okay, so now what I think I'll do is do my die cutting. Let's make sure this is all nice and dry. I love how that looks so tie-dye. It's gonna be really fun. Okay, I don't need that yet. Let's grab this cutie. And I'm trying to think here. I think what I want to do is actually grab a separate panel. And I think I'll cut my tree from this panel. Before I do that though, let's trim this panel down just a hair. And let's have the final dimensions be four by five and a quarter. Okay, just a quarter of an inch off each side and let's place this 
right down. Okay, so I do want to make sure that that is just about as perfect as can be because this will be my panel. So do I want to add, I think, is this a little tree trunk? I wonder if I want to add that. I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to add any additional embellishments. I think I'm simply going to do this. All right, let's grab my die cutting machine and send this through. Okay, there is my little tree. Now, because I'm going to be using this piece as my card base, I'm going to actually cover it with another piece of cardstock. That way, my little cuts in my cutting plate, they don't make an impression on my paper. I don't want all those cuts to transfer over to my paper. And normally it doesn't matter because I'm not, you know, I'm just cutting out a die cut or whatnot, but this time it does because this is my actual card panel. And I kind of look at how cute that is, embossed the paper. Now that is a fun idea in and of itself. Okay, now being very gentle to remove my tape here again. This is now my card panel. So see how nice and clean that is? It didn't have all of the impressions of the cutting plates. I wonder if you can see on here. This is ridiculously gorgeous. I think that is so fun. Huh. Okay. There's another way you can use your die. So now you can keep your little tree cut out, but I'm going to use that as my little opening for my shaker. Okay. All right. So this could be a two for one card. Here is your other piece that you have. Super cute. All right. Okay. So let's move this to the side. It's our little scrap tree. Now we have our little shaker cover. So let's open this up. Now it just comes in. Oh, it does not. I thought that I read in the description that it was only one. Okay, I have three in mine. I am, I am giddy about that because when I thought it was one, I was like, oh man, what if I wanna do two? <laughs> well, you just buy two, right? But goodness, this is so cool. Okay, so now we have our little opening and we can place our little shaker right in here, just like that. See how dimensional that is? Isn't that fun? Okay, so I'm thinking of doing something like this. Isn't that neat? And I, I do want to keep the border that pink. I think that would be super pretty. So let's go ahead and attach this little shaker piece. I'm wondering, do I just use a liquid glue? I've used these in the past, these shaker cover. Um, oh, you know where it was is I did, in fact, I know I use liquid glue. The last time I did this kind of dimensional shaker cover from Waffle Flower. I did it with their circle covers and I did a mermaid card and I had these be the little bubbles. Well, not the tree, of course, but the little inserts be the bubbles. So, so darn cute. I'll link that video if you want another way to be inspired with these covers, just with a different shape. Okay, I'm going to turn this over so that it's nice and flat and then I'll kind of just pressed down from the front. You know, on second thought, I kind of want to bring that tree trunk in. I think it'll be just fine and cute. So I think that's what that is at least. Okay, so there's that. Now, I think before I add any of the fill, what I'm going to do is, well, I guess you don't need foam tape, but you could if you wanted to give this a raised look, which I absolutely do. I think that would be super fun. However, you're going to have to be mindful to make sure that there's no gap and opening. But you know what? I think it's going to be worth it. It's going to be make it, it's going to make it extra bulky to do it that way. Should I do that way or just do? No, you know what? I'm going to do it this way. The whole idea of the shaker cover is that it creates the whole element for you. So I'm not going to add any extra dimension. I think it'll be just fine. So knowing that the next thing that I think is appropriate is bringing in the fill. Okay. I have these little star sequins 
that I think could be super pretty. I also have them in gold as well, but I don't know that they would contrast as well. So I think I'm gonna do the stars. So just to get an idea, I could place these. Oh, final answer. I already know I'm gonna love that. That's way too cute. Oh yeah, so pretty, definitely. So what I can do is just place these right over here. Okay, aren't those pretty? I'll link these below as well. These are beautiful. And I think that that is plenty. Might even be a little full. Let me test it. So I'm just gonna put my back panel on. Is that gonna be too full? I don't know. You kind of lose all of that distressed technique that I just did, but that's okay because it's still super pretty. I'm gonna take a little bit of that out just so that we have a little bit more movement and a little bit more appreciation to that background we did. And I think that that is pretty good. All right, so don't waste a single star because these are just way too pretty. I'm gonna make sure that they are nice and kind of padded down. That way we get a really nice flat press once we glue. So that looks good. Now I think I'll just take my glue again. I think that will be perfectly fine. So let me bring my glue in here. Let's get this all placed down. Actually, let's glue this area as well. Just to make sure we cover our bases. So, oh, I should have done it the other way. Oh, Bethany. Oh, now I'm in a pickle. Now I'm gonna line that up. How on earth am I gonna line that up? Well, you know, you do have some wiggle room. So let me, we always <laughs> joke that I am the queen of lining things up. So let me see if I can do it. And then we have wiggle room with the glue. Okay, if I do that, turn it over. Oh, pretty close. Just wiggle it into place. Okay. <laughs> you do yours the other way. I, I did that in the wrong direction. Okay. I think that looks good. Pretty. But you still get that ombre look on the side. So that's super pretty. I like that. Okay. I'm going to make sure this is nice and pressed down. Okay. And there is our little shaker. How cute is that? Oh, that's darling. Okay, now let's put this on a card base and think about a sentiment. Also think about if we want to bring in maybe this. Yeah, I think that would be super cute. We can always try and see if we like it. Although I really kind of just like how plain and simple that is. Um, I don't know, I think I'm gonna leave it. Okay, now what would this be? what this is. Hmm, I'm not sure. Okay, let's think about the sentiment. Okay, earlier in the season, I was showing you these beautiful hot foil sentiments that were released by Spellbinders and Simon Hurley. So when I did that video, it had me foil an entire sheet of sentiments and I have just been keeping them to the right of my craft mat. And honestly, I only have two left. So grab that because you're gonna use it time and time again on your project. But I think that this would be completely gorgeous. So I'm gonna do my card base. I'll add this to the top, maybe add a little pop of sequins and then you know what surprise I know you love when I do this so why not make you happy we're gonna do the bonus card with the little tree cut out so let's do our card base I have my score buddy here I also have 110 pound cardstock and then this is going to be trimmed down to 11 by four and a quarter really quickly I will score at five and a half and because I know we're gonna do a bonus card let's do one more all right work smart not hard I already have the tool out. Both of these will be a top folding A2 card. And now we'll be ready to go. Okay, so this will be for my bonus card. This will be for my current card. I think what I will do here is just use some tape runner to adhere 
my panel to my card. They're the exact same size. And that is uber plenty, Bethany. Okay, let's bring that score buddy back in. I suppose I don't need to do this. And what I'll do is bring this in, bring my card in. Here's my sticky side, see that? With its plethora of adhesive. Okay, and then making sure I put it this way because that's my crease of my card is right here. Then I can use this to line up my panel and my card base. Placing that down and there we go. Okay, now my panel must have been just a tad bigger than my card base there. But you know what, I'm gonna keep it like that because if I trim that, it's not going to be even in my little margin. So once it's closed, it's gonna look fine. Not gonna worry about that. Okay, so you can skip this step if you'd like. I'm mainly going to do this because while well, dimension is just about everything, right? But because it's going to stick really good, really quick. I don't wanna wait for the liquid glue to dry on that little shaker cover. So I'm gonna add some more dimension and oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love all the elements we have going on here. I think that looks good just like so. Place that down and here is our little shaker. Oh my goodness, how pretty is that? So much dimension, which I love. This may be one that you want to hand deliver but I love that. It's just so, it's just like a pop-up card almost. <laughs> love it. Okay, let's, I, you know, I was going to add sequins, but I just don't think I'm going to. I like how clean and simple this is. And also I feel like if I add any additional sequins, it's gonna be too much for me because I already have a little sequins fill and I know I don't want to bring those stars back in. At least I don't think so. Let me see what those would look like, but I don't know that those would be fully appreciated on the outside of the card. Well, I don't know. So we could... No, you know what? I'm gonna stick with my gut. Now I'm rhyming. You know what? I'm gonna stick with my gut. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. Now let's bring these oxides right back in and let's make a fun little pink tree. Okay, starting with spun sugar once more. I did clean off my brush. Let's bring that right at the tippy top. Okay, beautiful. Bring in Kitsch Flamingo. Gorgeous. Ooh, I love. And so hard on a little tiny shape, but we've got this. Let's spin this around and bring in the picked raspberry. Okay, this one comes in super hot. I love this color. Here we go. Deepen that at the bottom. Blend it up a little bit. Oh, I love that. How pretty. You know, I kind of want to leave it alone and not anything else. I'm going to aid that transition just a little bit there. Maybe, let me wipe off my brush, maybe deepen my mid-tone just a little bit. There we go. Clean and my sponge sugar. Just one more time. It's kind of a hair light. Come here. Do better when it's at an angle. I'm not sure why. You know what? You gotta figure out your method and go with it. Okay, that is my final answer. I think that is adorable. I think, right? Should I deepen the kitsch flamingo? Ugh. Okay, there we go. Love it. Okay, let's remember kitsch flamingo, spun sugar, and picked raspberry. Now, I'll link everything that I'm using down below. That way, you have it for reference if you want to recreate or add some of these color combinations to your collection. Okay, let's think about a card base here. Let's do a once more, well, no, I'm gonna do once more at four. 
Oh, that panel is a little wonky. I'll have to put that in my scrap bin. Okay. Okay, four. That one is two. What was I doing when I was trimming my cardstock? There, we'll just turn it around and chop the wonky end off. Four by five and a quarter. Make sure it's completely square on the corners. Okay, that looks good. And I think what would be fun here is bringing in maybe some of these elements. So we have these little light sets, which are really pretty, and we have the lights. So let's play around with that. Grab all of these. Let's see, how many lights are we gonna need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we'll need to cut this out three times. Okay. Okay, I have a little scrap piece, so I can cut out all of my, I think I'll do my little strands in white. And then what I think would be cute, thinking completely on the fly here, is I think it would be kind of cute to do like a gold glitter cardstock and a mint for the lights. Now I've already said it out loud, so if I cut it out and it's completely hideous, then I've learned my lesson, but I kind of want to see where I can go with that. Okay, this is absolutely a job for my little mini die cut machine. And let's send that right on through. So here is our little string of lights. Let me grab my additional colored card stock. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I need to trim a little piece off, but I have some Concord and Ninth card stock. There are the lights, there they are. And I also have some gold glitter. I kind of want to just get an idea of if I'm gonna even like this. But that's cute. Okay, let's bring one or two through here. Oh, cute. Look how they have a little kind of an embossed line in there. Or it's actually almost a cut. Isn't that cute? Don't mind my cutting plates. They are happy to be creating. Okay. Hmm, I'm already thinking I'm going to like the gold. I think the gold will be a little bit more, um, what's the word? Ooh, I just, I don't know. Let's, it's not over till it's over. Let's grab a piece here. Okay, so the only thing about the gold is you do lose that little line, but this I think is going to be so pretty. Oh, <laughs> it's bouncing all over the place, but yeah. Okay, we're gonna do all gold. I think that would be too pretty. Let's grab a little pokey tool. Get all these little pieces out. I'll go ahead and run this through two additional times so that we have all of our lights. We'll say no thank you to this kind of mint color. Okay, I think that that is going to be the best answer. I think that sparkle is gonna be absolutely stunning. So, how about, oh, you know what? I don't even think I know what I'm going to do for the sentiment. Okay, let's figure out what in the world we do with these. So, I feel like this needs to go down, like swag down. I think that's probably it. Okay, that's going up. So I'm sure it's that, that, and that. Pretty? Okay, I think that that's right. Let's grab tweezers and grab my glue tweezers. Okay, I'll probably focus on the light bulb area and probably the ends. Let's bring this in. Oh, hold on. Where's it go? There you go. I have to line it up. Yo, let go. Oh, perfect. Stamp block. So pretty. Oh, I love it so much. 
Okay, what are we going to like better, the first card or the second card? I love when it's a debate. And I love a bonus card. And I know you guys do too. Go Gaga for this, <laughs> which is so fun. Got to know what to do with the leftover pieces because sometimes do you feel like we, you know, put them in a pile and say, oh, I'm going to do something with that because I don't want to be wasteful. And then they sit there. I don't know if I'm not like the only one who does that. I can't be the only one who does that though. So much crafting, so little time. I feel like that is a popular sentiment. Okay, now which way did I have that? Because I kind of got that a little lopsided, I think, that way. Is that right? I think so. Okay, there we go. Now, I already know I'm going to love, love, love the lights. So I'm going to just go ahead and place those down. There's a little wand to place these little pieces. And I will just slowly but surely place those on those little templates. Okay. Oh, pretty. That is just the sparkle that it needs. Love, love, love. Here we are. I'm just going to lay a brick right over that to make sure they settle nice. Had one little extra light. And let's talk about the card base. I think it would be super cute. Hmm. I think it'd be super cute to bring some pink back with a sentiment and stamp it right on the base of the card. Keeping it clean and keeping it super simple. Let's do it. Okay, speaking of pink things that you need to pause and go add to cart immediately. Have you guys seen the new Pink Misty? It is right up my alley. Had to have. To be fair, my other larger Misty that was the same size, it, I think it was just kind of nearing the end of its life. So I needed to replace it anyway. It was a good time. And look how gloriously pink. Okay, so I have my panel here. Did I trim this down? Yes, I did. Okay, so a little magnet, thinking of doing that. And then I have this really pretty stamp set for the holidays from Spellbinders. They sent this over to me and I used it on another project, but they're too good. They are just too good. I feel like I'm gonna bring this out time and time again. So I think I want something super, like wishing you joy, something very simple. Yeah, I kind of like wishing you joy. I think that's really kind of pretty. And I think what I'll do is, can you use Distress Oxides on stamps? I I think I'm going to. I think that's straight. Let's see here. Yep. I think maybe I'll do middle of the road in terms of color and do the, well, I don't know. Maybe I should just do, no, I'm gonna do Kitsch Flamingo. Let's try that. Let's see how this looks. It's so delicate that I don't want to over stamp it. Oh, pretty. Oh, I love it. I love it. In fact, I'm not going to stamp that again, well, with more ink, but I'm gonna come in. I pushed it hard on that other side, so let me kind of push hard on this side so it just evens out the contrast. I love it. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Cleaning this off, and I think it's time for a bit of dimension. We already have our card panel here, so let's add the dimension both to our panel and then also, I'm gonna make sure that's dry, and then also to our tree. All right, so I have some of this leftover 
foam mounting tape from Dollar Tree. I did a fun video on all of the card making supplies that you can find at Dollar Tree. This actually is really awesome tape. The only thing that's difficult about it is that, and I know this is gonna sound silly, please forgive me and feel free to chuckle. It is extremely sticky. And I feel like I've said it before and I'll say it again. I feel like you could mend a helicopter with it and then be completely fine to fly it. It's, it's insanely sticky. So that is my only thing. It's not a bad thing. It just kind of makes sometimes working with it a little, well, a little sticky. But I love the thickness of it. It's, and when I say that, I mean, it's actually, what I love about it is that it's nice and thin. It gives just a subtle, subtle pop of dimension. Okay, there we go. Now, I want a bit more for my tree, so I'm gonna bring in these foam squares. They're just a tad thicker. I want this to pop a bit more. Then let's place this down. Oh goodness, I love it, it's so simple. It's so me. I'm not gonna add any additional shine because I want it to remain visually with the little lights on the tree. That is it. Oh my goodness, I love it. So cute. Let me know which one is your favorite. They're adorable. And I love how they coordinate so well together too. Really loving the pink sentiment. It's just, that's where it's at for me. I am just digging that. So go ahead and check out the description box below if you want to add any of these to your collection. I am obsessed with how these turned out. I think... There's, there's elements to each one that make one or the other my favorite. I love the simplicity of this, and I just think it's really bold while being just simple and classy looking. However, this with that fun background and then also the foiled sentiment, so pretty. I love it. Okay, everyone, be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching or if you leave this video feeling inspired. I hope I inspired you in one way or another. I'll continue crafting with you in the next video. Can't wait to share what I'm going to be bringing to my craft table next. So I'll see you soon.